Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Parallel C++. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about spin locks. So there are a number of different ways that we can serialize access to some shared resource inside of our parallel applications. So for example, one tool that we could use is something like a lock. Now, there are a number of different types of locks that are out there. And up until this point, we've largely just looked at our std mutex or a mutex lock. Now, another type of lock that's out there is this thing called a spin lock. Now, the main difference between things like mutexes and spin locks largely deal with how they wait for a lock to become free. So for example, one strategy that we could adopt when waiting for a lock to become free is we could just sleep the waiting thread and wait for, and then wake it back up whenever the lock becomes free. Now, this works perfectly well and is you know, fine in a number of different circumstances, but it isn't that great if we expect to only be waiting a very short period of time for the lock to become free. Then we might not want to go through all this effort to put a thread to th sleep just to immediately wake it back up. So one thing we could do is just keep the thread alive and keep waiting for the lock to become free. So keep checking the lock state actively. And this is essentially what we get with a spin lock. So spin locks uh, perform this form of busy waiting. So they'll often just spin you know, very quickly inside of a loop, checking the state of the lock and waiting for it to become free instead of being forced to say, go to sleep. So what we're gonna be looking at today is you know, a couple simple examples you know, where we swap out our std mutex for a spin lock. So let's go ahead and get started. So we'll open up this uh, mutex.cpp. This is going to be our first example. So our, uh, our, our example here is pretty simple here. All we do is we create a list of 2 to the 20 elements that we just fill with some random numbers here. And then what we're going to do is have a very simple work function that just in a while loop, so while true, it's going to try and grab the lock, right? So we have this lock guard here for our std mutex. So we try and grab the lock. And then if we you know, don't have any elements left in our list, we just break out of here and the thread ends. Otherwise, we try to remove the last element of the list, right? So we're gonna have a number of different threads all trying to remove the last item inside of some list here. Then at the very bottom, right, this is where we actually spawn our work here. So we'll spawn eight threads that'll all try to remove items from this list uh, one by one, but they have to ground this lock before they're able to do so. Okay, so that's gonna be our mutex example here. Let's go ahead and see our spin lock example. So our spin lock example works exactly the same, except this time, instead of using our std mutex, we're going to be using a, a pthread spin lock t. So that's coming from this pthread.h here. So, you know, over here, you can see we just initialize a uh, spin lock um, using this pthread spin init. We have the exact same setup for a list, so still two to the 20 elements. And then we have our work function down here, and it does the exact same thing as our other work function. The only difference is now we're just using this pthread spin lock and pthread spin unlock. So before we do anything, we first grab the lock then we check to see if the you know, list is empty. So if we've already removed all the elements. If the list is empty, we release the lock and just end the thread. So we break out of this while loop. Otherwise, we remove the last item or the, the back of the list here using this uh, list.pop back and then unlock our spin lock. And we have the exact same setup for our threads as well. So we spawn eight total threads um, that we put inside of this vector of these to J threads here. Okay, so two very simple examples here. All we're really doing between them is swapping out our std mutex with this pthread spin lock t. So let's go ahead and see how the differences in these locking strategies um, can impact the performance right in this simple benchmark. So first we'll go ahead and compile our uh, first example, this uh, mutex. Uh, we're gonna be compiling with O3 optimizations, setting the standard to C++20 since we're using things like jthreads and linking against libpthread here. So we'll go ahead and compile that and then we'll also compile our spinlock.cpp with the exact same uh, compilation flags here. O3 optimizations, standard is C++20, linking against libpthread. So let's go ahead and see the difference in you know, execution time between these two. So we'll go ahead and time the execution of you know, our simple benchmark here that uses a mutex. 
So we see it takes somewhere on the order of, you know, 0.25 seconds, right, each time. So 0 0.245, 0 0.247, 0 0.250, it seems to be fairly consistent around that number. Maybe a little bit faster sometimes at 0 0.238. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how the performance compares with our spin lock here. So we'll go ahead and run uh, our spin lock benchmark. And we see we have a fairly large difference in performance here. So we'll run it for a few different iterations here. So we're getting somewhere on the order of 0 0.166 seconds, 0 0.177 seconds, and even all the way down to 0 0.125 seconds here. So a lot faster, even sometimes twice as fast as our mutex case here, right? So depending on the type of application that we're working with here, it may be more beneficial to use something like a spin lock instead of a mutex here. Right? Our spin locks tend to be very lightweight and just quickly spin checking on the state of lock. So if locks become free very quickly, we may not want to take all of this effort to say try to put a thread to sleep right, uh, and do all the extra work that something like a mutex might do. So let's go ahead and take a look at the actual pthread spin lock implementation here and we can see exactly how simple it is. So here I've just dumped out uh, using uh, objdump. Uh, the assembly from this uh, from from glibc. So let's go ahead and open up this file here, and we can go ahead and search for p uh, pthread spin lock here, right? And we can actually see the implementation, how simple it really is. So we start off here, right? Whenever we call this lock function, we do this atomic decrement here. So this is us trying to grab the lock. Then we check to see if we got the lock. So that's what this jump not equal is doing. If we did get the lock, we just return zero here. So we do this um, XOR, this exclusive OR of EAX with EAX, just zero out this register before returning. So that's the case if we did get the lock here. And if we didn't get the lock, you can see we jump down to this 9BE40 here, right, right here. And that's where we get this pause instruction. So oftentimes inside of uh, you know, spin lock implementations, we'll implement things like waiting or uh, things like pause instructions to just stop our pipeline from executing some instructions for a little bit of time. We basically give a little bit of buffer before we check the lock again. Now here, after we've gone past this pause instruction, what we do is we read the state of the lock again, right? So we're reading from this RDI register again, this address. We read that again and compare it against zero. So we're just checking to see if the, uh, um, the lock has been unlocked. So if the lock has been unlocked here, right, we jump back up, up to this 9BE4, right, and this is where we try to grab the lock again. So again, we do this atomic decrement. Right? If the lock is still locked here, so if this compare failed, um, we go ahead and just jump back to this pause instruction here. So we have this very tight loop where we're reading the state of the lock, checking to see if it's been unlocked, and either trying to grab the lock again, or just going back to waiting, right, and going to this pause instruction here. So that's essentially all it takes to actually implement something like a spin lock here. Okay, so that's a little bit on spin locks here and how they're kind of implemented and how they function. Now, um, there's a lot of nuance when it comes to locking here, and it isn't, say, an all or nothing between mutexes and spin locks. So, for example, you can have hybrid types of locks where they first um, act as a spin lock and try and repeatedly grab a lock for a small number of iterations. And if they fail to grab the lock in that number of iterations, then they put the thread to sleep, right, and then wake it back up sometime later. So you can have hybrid locks like that. Also, you know, one lock often isn't, the, say, the best in all circumstances. There'll be cases where a mutex will be better than a spin lock. There'll be cases where you actually want to put a thread to sleep because there are other threads that could be doing actually useful work during that time versus a spin lock that's just in this busy waiting loop, just kind of wasting time continuously reading the state of a lock. That can really just be a waste of time in some cases there. So when each is better um, depends on the exact circumstances. The general rule of thumb though is if you really don't know what type of lock you should be using, you should probably start with something like a mutex, like stood mutex. Okay. Now that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. Simple example on spin locks. I'll link below the video, um, a playlist I have on how you can actually implement uh, a number of different types of spin locks yourself with different kinds of optimizations. But that's gonna go ahead and do it for this time. 
Um, you can check out any of my stuff at github.com slash coffee before arch. And as always, I hope you have a nice day.